God. It was a mess down here. How was your Christmas? Oh, hold on. It looks like now, as of right now, we're... Oh, I can't hear you now. All right, Corey, now we're live on YouTube. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. All right, let's start over. How are you going? How are you doing, Corey? Christmas has kind of wiped us out, as it always does. How about you? Yeah, it was a, it was a good holiday season with travels and family, and it's uh, it is definitely work having more of a family now than than last year. It was now now he's more of a handful, I guess. My son is, and so yeah. it's it's a lot of fun, but it's it can be tiring. Yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. And now we have the new year coming up, and uh, quite the year two thousand twenty three has been, has it not? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was just a roller coaster with UFO disclosure. It's it's amazing that we, you know, I, I don't I, I don't even know like I haven't been able to read all the details of the the bill that was passed in the national, you know, the 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 NDAA uh for the for the military and I know that they they gutted the review board and they gutted a lot of other things and um but they still maintained um like a national archives records collection aspect of it, I guess. And I assume that, that that will have some impact on how much UFO type of documentation that the Congress can access. And that might lead to other things too, I suppose. But this is what they're 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 claiming that it's not everything wasn't completely blocked with this final bill. Um were you hear anything about that? Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, the uh military intelligence uh groups and corporations fighting back. Um, you know. It, you've, before the bill was voted on, you saw notable figures in ufology discussing a catastrophic disclosure. And uh, that has been kind of a small threat that they've been making, that all of their whistleblowers may come out anyway and inadvertently reveal things that may not have been if the government had worked with them and uh sure enough uh intelligence agencies are fighting back and uh now um a lot of these whistleblowers are going to start coming out now, in 2024 um i've been told that uh all efforts are really being of the alliance are really being focused behind what are now uh at least 88 whistleblowers if not more who have come forward uh, to uh, give private briefings, classified briefings to Congress, but about half of them are people that uh, have been reported to the Inspector General uh, for the intelligence agencies, but uh, they are they feel like they have the momentum coming now to where they're going they're going to start coming out, and you're going to start seeing firsthand. Um, uh, testimony about these sorts of things. I don't know if next year um, they're, they're even they're even speculating that the pressure is going to be so heavy once some of this catastrophic disclosure comes out because they're going to have documents and photos and that sort of thing with with them that it's going to force uh, Biden or someone in uh, the administration to give a small acknowledgement that there are aliens from other planets or other beings that we have uh, recovered craft from, but very little other than that. And then they plan to kind of protract this out until 2027 uh, or 2028, when they are honestly, they're, they're expecting the uh, one of these groups to show themselves um, and uh it you know to to the masses that you know we're going to learn basically they're going to disclose themselves uh, and um there's a big battle behind the scenes on how that's going to unfold between now and then yeah this is very interesting times and certainly 2023 has been one of the most interesting years i think we've ever seen with testimony of david grush essentially leading to what was the fulfillment of the dream of so many in the ufology community with the desire to have open hearings in, in Congress. And, you know, there, there were mock hearings that have been done in the past. 
and there was the you know the disclosure project press club events that had a bunch of whistleblowers coming forward who also are not quite the same category of whistleblowers as what we have with people like David Grush, where they're much more, um, I would say David Grush is more credible in a lot of ways, but he also didn't have the firsthand experience. So I'm also curious if some of these 88 whistleblowers that you mentioned, are these people who had the firsthand experience with interactions with beings? The uh, interaction with craft or beings, um, David Grush, uh, after the new year is going to release an op-ed where he's going to give a little bit more information about his firsthand information. Uh, so he does have, he's, he was read into certain uh, programs. Uh, he was shown documents and uh, uh, I was told he saw like maybe images and, and possibly video as a part of that. Um, but he's been unable to speak about it. Uh, he's had it approved to where he can talk a little bit about it and that will unfold more as to give him more of the credibility as uh because he spearheaded everything you know for what's over what's, you know nearing 90 if not over 90 whistleblowers now um and some of these people currently work in the program for corporations and in the military and but many of them are retired and um some of them are are some of the older people that were part of the legacy programs that don't feel like they have uh, anything to lose at this point. I see. Well, I guess this is a good time to maybe take a step back before we go into Q and A and everything else. Uh, we could talk about what's going on with with our projects, and also I want to remind people that if you want to participate with the live Q and A, we have this all set up through Ascension Works TV. We're simultaneously broadcasting out to YouTube at the same time right now, but all of our interactions are focused on the people who are the subscribers and who are on Essential Works TV. Um, so look for us there. Um, and um, yeah, did you want to uh, say anything about your what's going on with your um, <laughs> your supporters and how things have gone this year? Yeah, I mean, this has been a crazy year. Last year was crazy as well, but. Uh... Yeah, I mean, um, I am really grateful for everyone who has continued to support uh, me and uh, also Mike and the work that we're doing. It's been, you know, we've gone through absolute hell, you know, and I guess, you know, we're starting to see, you know, movement in the lawsuits, um, which is, you know, feels good, you know, because we, we have other things that we're trying to move on to. Um, you know, I'm about to get a default judgment against one of the partners that I worked with, uh, a couple of others. Uh, um, yeah, we, we're just ready to bring all of that to, to court, which happens this summer, because we have a lot of evidence, a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, the racketeering, you know, I mean, it's, it's been pretty incredible. I, I didn't realize, you know, what a hornet's nest I was walking into about a decade ago. Um, but uh, you, this ufology, it's all part of a larger entertainment kind of mechanism or corporate mechanism. And, uh, uh, and I found working in the entertainment industry with some of the documentaries we're working on, you know, it is a nasty place to navigate you know i everyone that i have spoken to has had lawsuits or uh, are about to have lawsuits. there's all of this going on because there's so much unethical behavior you know in the entertainment industry and in the ufo side of it it's just really bad but uh you know the people that have supported us uh uh we really appreciate it we're looking forward to having some events soon to where we can all come back together as a tribe and commune again. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm very, very appreciative of your support. Those of you that have contributed to lightwarriorlegalfund.org to help us with all these massive lawsuits have been uh, a blessing. Um, all of the information, I mean, we've spent, I can't even tell you how much we spent on cyber investigators and PIs and all of that because of all the criminal behavior. Um, it's amazing. And, um, uh, I mean, most people don't realize, um, 
I mean, this is why your support is so appreciated. During the time period, starting in 2016, after the show David and I were doing came out, I had five family members die like almost a year apart for almost five years. And before I could mourn one, another one would happen. It was horrible. And the people who came in to work with me, you know, you know, that used the namaste and love and light and all of that, uh, you know, I thought that they were going to have my back when I was going through these things and I was having to try to recover. And instead they were using it to take over my my business and tricking me into signing papers to where they own part of my business. Yeah. Very shady stuff, you know, embezzlement, all kinds of horrible stuff. I had that going on during the deaths. I had the cyber stalking campaign. I was working in a hostile work environment at the um, uh, streaming company that was doing our show. It was horrible. The only thing that kept me going uh, quite honestly, was the support of the community. You know, as everyone knows, uh, when my uh, that position was leaked, that you know, it, I was fighting for not only my business, my life story, but my family. These people had done everything to destroy any potential I could of making business. They were trying to steal my life story. I had to say and do what was necessary, and take people to court to do what was necessary to protect myself and not take the information I've been releasing for years and twist it and turn it into all of these, you know, money-making schemes and, uh, you know, and having so many people from the community, you know, start take trying to take over the information and narrative and LARPing. It's been crazy, but in the end, you know, all of these people, I tried to handle it in the background, giving them a year, sometimes three years to settle in the background quietly, but they decided to take to the court of public opinion. So unfortunately, I've had to defend myself by taking people to civil court, uh, taking things to federal uh, investigators, um, but also I have to set things straight in the court of public opinion. So one of these document documentaries we're doing, I'm doing it with some pretty major uh, uh, showrunner directors, and um, it's going to be, you know, the alien mania, the subculture war for disclosure. And uh, people are worried that it's going to be a hit piece against the community. Absolutely not. Like I said, about 70% of the community is beautiful, awesome. Um, it's just a small percentage of people doing the crazy illegal stuff. But it, it's going to be, we're going to do a show and uh, the uh, directors are not going to do any hit pieces. They're going to do kind of a true crime. I'm going to tell my side. Uh, all of these other characters are going to be given an opportunity to tell their side. And then all of the evidence I have collected is going to be presented, their evidence to be presented. And we're going to have investigators do their own investigations. And it's going to be like a true crime reality TV show. It's going to be interesting, but it's going to shed a lot of truth on things and expose a lot of corruption. Uh, but it's also going to highlight uh, the 70% of people in this community who are honestly love and light, beautiful souls. And it's going to set the record straight. Um, it's going to be very exciting. Uh, we're, we're working on another uh, show that's actually being pitched next month. Um, nervous and excited because um, we've had couples. We we had a show a couple of years ago sold to Travel Channel, and then the merger happened, and everything that was greenlit was red lit. And we've had you know setbacks like that, but this is uh, this one looks good. It's going to be uh, giving James Gilliland and East City Ranch the spotlight that they finally deserve. It's going to be a, a docu series on. Uh, well, it's going to uh, it's going to be a docu series that. Uh, covers his ranch and surrounding areas and a lot of the paranormal phenomenon. And he's going to get to give his perspective for the first time um, and tell his story. So we're really excited about that because some big people are involved. And then uh, the alien mania show is something that we hope to start shooting this summer while some of these lawsuits unfold. So that's some really crazy stuff I know, but holy crap. I mean, the show's going to be about my 10 years in this uh, field 
and cover the history also of other uh, crazy things that have gone on. But this has been crazy, guys. So I really appreciate your support. Uh, please look forward to uh, those two shows that we're working on. Um, and uh, I've been working on the gaming company that's going well and progressing. Um, and I'm really excited also about what we have going on with Ascension Awards TV going into 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing all that, Corey. It, it can be challenging for people to process, but the, the community that that has been the sort of traditional UFO community has been full of people largely trying to make money from the UFO community. And that's often what defines what we see the UFO community as. However, right now we're entering into a time period where it feels like it's just the potential for what the community is to expand and explode in so many ways is is completely unique now as people are waking up and interested in, in being a part of a, a real change in, in the world and, and not doing this for, for money, but doing this because they want to see the, the truth getting out wherever the truth may be found. And, um, and so I want to mention again that if people want to help with the activism side of things, that they should check out our webinar we did last October called Activation and Activism. Um, you can find that on essentialworks.tv slash courses. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, there's a lot that we can do. I also created on Essential Works TV, I created a local community map that you can find essentialworks.tv slash map. You can go on there, find your region, see if there's anybody else local to you that you you might want to form a group with or, or, or have discussions with. And that's those are, once you join a private um, local region, your chats in there are private just to the people who have joined that local region. So you can have somewhat security around around your conversation in those in those uh, community groups that I've created on Essential Works TV now. Um, and some other things I could share about Essential Works TV that I've been doing. Um, I'm close to finishing a feature uh, that'll make it possible to import a podcast. If you already have a podcast and you want to get some of your content on Essential Works TV into the community podcasts area, you just have to have an RSS feed. You can get your podcast imported there, video or audio podcasting. And then it will also work on our Roku channel that we just launched. And also I'm very close to launching um, a Fire TV channel. We already have support with uh, you know Chromecast and Apple um, AirPlay, um, but the Fire TV channel, currently you still have to use the web browser in the Fire TV to work to make everything work the same, but that'll be launched pretty soon too. Um, I'm excited to get a lot more content up there. Also uh, more collaborations. We haven't really done as, that many collaborations with people who have sub sub sent in their submissions of wanting to do courses or content on Essential Works TV. We're very grateful for everyone who submitted their um, request to, to join us and creating content together. And uh, I hope to reach out to many more of those people very soon. And so we can get many more kinds of metaphysical subjects and really good teachings. And I'm trying to do my best in curating, you know, cultivating the highest quality teaching that we can find and sifting through some of the, the information that is clearly contradictory and unhelpful. But, but yeah, there's, there's so many different belief systems out there, but I know a lot of people are very, very knowledgeable in, in many fields. And that's what, that's what we're interested in right now. Um, yeah, and uh, not to mention more will be coming out about this next year, but we are working on doing a uh, kind of a crowd investment uh, um, program to where we're looking to raise money to be able to put out documentaries and, and more shows and to increase the content and bring more of a spotlight onto a lot of the people in this community who have really good content. And uh, we'll be, uh, you know, you can speak about that how, however you like right now. I know there's a lot more to come. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just in the early stages of this, um, but probably within the next couple of months, we'll have more announcements about exactly what you're getting if you choose to invest with us. Um, but it's incredible the resources that are available to, to companies now to have people um, investing as little as $100 into a company and then owning a part of that company. So this is a relatively new thing, maybe since like 2012 timeframe when the law was passed to allow the crowdfunding to kind of make investing a much simpler process for small companies like Essential Works TV. So we're hoping to see if, see if that will be useful for us to accelerate the, the production of content so we can pay you guys if you have great content and make sure that we can keep pr producing much more at a faster rate than we have been um cuz I know I know that's what's needed is really high quality content. Yes, a steady stream of high quality content. Yeah. Yeah, and so 
And also, you know, um, we're working with uh, Fabio Santos um, uh, on doing an event here in Colorado uh, in April. Uh, end of April. In, end of a- the very end of April for a weekend. Um, more of that, more is about to be uh, released about that. Uh, we're working on the fine details and locking in, uh, you know, the speakers. This is uh, Fabio's uh, event that we're working with him on. And uh, then in late September, uh, he's invited me back to Brazil to do an event. So I'm pretty excited about going back. I loved Brazil uh, back when I went in 2020. So we'll have more details about that soon as well. All right. I think that maybe covered all the things that we had wanted to talk about. Um, if that sounds good, we can get started with the q and I think that covers everything. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's do the Q&A. All right. All right. So um, we could start out with a question. You had mentioned that the, the AI profit groups are trapped in two star systems right now that they consider their strongholds, which is our own star system and Aldebaran. And so do you have any more details about what's going on with Aldebaran? And there's also some other questions about here, such as, uh, are, is this a po- possibility for the negative entities to escape to Aldebaran and have that be their stronghold again? I I don't know exactly how things are playing out on Aldebaran. Um, if at some point it's going to have a solar event, I don't know how things are playing out there. Um, things here are still like pretty much where I left off. Uh, not a whole lot. Most of the big show right now is on Earth. And everybody's asking me for uh, SSP Alliance updates and all of that. And whenever I hear anything, it's status quo, status quo. You know, they are still, uh, you know, groups are still fighting their way towards Earth, expected to be here, you know, and, uh, you know, 2028 20, to 2030, the time frame, whatever time frames I gave before. Um, all of the information I've, I've really given has brought us up to, you know, 2028 20, when um, all of the, the big stuff is really going to start happening on Earth and this in the solar system. Um, so right now, you know, the solar system is still locked down. The Orion group is still in control. It's in control of Earth. Uh, Earth hasn't been liberated. Uh, They haven't been, the Orion group, Greys haven't been kicked out. And to be honest, you know, um, we have a pretty good bead on what, you know, the reptilians are, the insectoids and other groups. Some of them come from other dimensions, I guess. Some of them come from other planets, possibly within this universe. But the consensus about the grays is is really changing within the programs. Um, whatever being this is, um, some of them are thinking it could, could be what we've been referring to the AI. But more and more of them are coming to the conclusion that uh, we're, we have a so many different things going on, phenomenon going on. We have actual aliens visiting us. We have uh, weird ultra dimensional rift things happening on the planet that that cause weird phenomenon. There, there is so much to this. There's disclosure. You're going to have to say, I uh, when you say disclosure, what are UAPs? Well, there are UAPs that come from uh, flesh and blood aliens and there are some that are like it's really i've had this discussion with a few people and it's really messed with you know their ideas on their kind of the religious and, and ideology but there appears to be some sort of beings on this planet that we don't know what they are it seems like they almost like they're a cosmic elemental, you know, like the elemental beings that we have in the forest. But this, these seem to have come from the cosmos. And they've been here a very long time. And uh, they have the ability to be non-material. 
and material. They can just think themselves into material being in our plane. And this, whatever this is, supposedly, uh, and this is the information that's going to come out uh, eventually, is that whatever this force, whatever this is, this presence, it has been appearing to humanity for tens of thousands of years in different ways. Uh, it appeared to people for a long period of time as like Greek or Roman gods, supposedly, whatever it is, appeared to people as fairies and other different, you know, angels. And uh, they've, they've appeared to us as all sorts of things up until closer to this technological era when things are now, now we're being, pre they're presenting themselves to us as sci-fi in sci-fi ships, you know, it comes like right out of our mind from sci-fi, these ships that they're in, the insides of the ships, everything. It, it's, there's something that that's, that's not right that a lot of the people haven't been able to put their finger on. And it's, uh, it has a, spiritual connotation to it it has uh a long-term development connotation you know with humans and civilization and religion and um it's getting more confusing instead of more clear as we're getting these various disclosures uh we're getting various high level briefings and information through more of the earth type sources that have been investigating this for a while um it's uh it it, it it it's a mind screw i mean uh one of the hardest things that's been for uh, that's been messing with my head quite honestly for the last year is that military intelligence of course they come into the ufo community to see disinformation and to cause fights and, and little things but guess what so does this force or et whatever this is it comes in and appears to people in different ways, gives them conflicting information and is manipulating, uh, you know, the community and, and people within it. And it's, it's pretty freaking scary. Um, and uh, it's, you know, they've used those tactics on me and others that I know. And, uh, and a lot of us have started to figure certain things out. And um, the people in the programs, the top people that have been giving briefings recently, there's conflicting ideas. There, I mean, there's a lot of confusion occurring because there is so there are so many layers to what's going on on this planet. Uh, so many, it's like dimensional onion layers of of what's going on when it comes to like cryptids, uh, um, human consciousness in general, and how it's being manipulated. Um, how whatever these supposed cosmic elementals are that appear in different ways, that they've been using the earth as a way to attract uh, souls to give them a unique experience, you know, uh, trick them by saying, that, you know, giving them a unique experience to grow and, and attracting souls here, uh, imprisoning souls here and using souls for what we're not totally sure we're not totally sure what this is that we're dealing with because part of it is alien part of it is something else and they can't figure it out um so the more disclosure we get uh even within the programs the more confusion we're having having not more clarity so i can you know when a lot of this stuff starts dumping on the general population wow, you know, uh, if some of us in the community can't make heads or tails of it, it's, it's going to be confuse, confusing. Um, so, you know, the uh, Alliance is working with these dozens of uh, whistleblowers to release things in more of a controlled way um, because, quite honestly, some of them feel it is their moral obligation to prepare us for what is happening in 2027 or 2028, depending on who you ask. Um, <clears throat> some sort of, it, there's, we're gonna start learning more and more 
Uh, some of it's going to be disturbing. Um, it's going, going to lead up to, to whatever this event is in 27, 2027, 2028, according to all of these people. They're all chant, uh, repeating very similar stuff. So um, in the past, I've been given bad information and people say, Corey's predictions failed. I don't give predictions. I just report what I'm hearing. If missions fail, if things don't happen, that's just part of it. But uh, this is, there's a, there's too much uh, chatter about preparing civilization for, for some sort of uh, introduction to a non-human intelligence. Thank you, Corey. Um, yeah, we didn't, went into a few different subjects there. And I, we had uh, on the Secret Space Program Updates series, we had talked about the extra dimensional influence that you recently learned about. And I, I think I'm going to put some of that more, more of those episodes onto the YouTube channel for more people to get, get more background, what we were talking about there. I assume that's partly what you were referencing in terms of us not understanding exactly what we're dealing with. That's, that's one of the new yeah. layers that was discovered. Yeah. People in the programs, uh, a lot of uh, the people, there's a lot of them still, I thought they were out, but there's still a lot of them in the programs that uh, have more of conservative Christian and that kind of beliefs and uh, the people that are giving them briefings, of course, are, you know, like high level Masons and others. And whatever this extra dimension, whatever this is, they're referring to them as the architects, uh, you know, which is that's just their spin on it. But uh, they're giving the briefings to these, you know, generals and a lot of them are retired and they're working in um, industry now. They're giving, giving them these briefings about there's a trickster being or trickster beings on this planet presenting themselves differently to different people and uh, they just say it's the devil these are demons don't look into this don't just stay away from this no 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 this is really what what they believe fervently and you know what i don't they might be right because really, what's the difference if it's an extra dimensional evil being tricking us and we named it the devil a long time ago? I don't know. But anyway, these these people are really freaking out and they're really trying to keep certain information out of the public uh, because of their fears of uh, biblical Armageddon and all sorts of other things. We're all projecting. All of us are guilty of it. You, me, everyone watching, we're projecting our own fears or beliefs or ideology onto what's happening right now, you know? Um, and that's happening in the programs as well. And a lot of them are really freaked out. The more they're learning, the more they're realizing that maybe we don't even have the capacity to understand part of what's going on. We, we may not have the capacity to understand and that might be why it's presenting itself to us in certain ways. But um, yeah, I mean, this is this is a lot of new stuff for me too. And I've had to rearrange my reality and understanding of reality quite a bit uh, over the last year. Um, and it's been, you know, it's been pretty interesting. So and to clarify, some of this is just coming from earth sources and not the, the higher density beings who but have you gotten more of an insight from any higher density beings on some of these um mysterious influences no i have not i have not had the contact in a, in a while with them but like i said it's always sporadic it happens in clusters and then I, i'll go long periods of time and maybe have a dream or two but that's about it um and i'm in one of those periods right now and as a matter of fact the um Earth Alliance uh, briefings have uh, really changed quite a bit. Uh, you know, I can say now because they're not happening. Um, there were periodic bridge calls to where you wouldn't believe who all were on these calls, uh, giving almost like a round table of briefings and like all no, no questions or just a round table of briefings. And uh, certain people with certain clearances were allowed to call in to this coded whatever type of call. And uh, some of them 
uh, allowed other people to listen in that they probably shouldn't. And uh, uh, for a while, I was allowed to listen in on, on certain calls, you know, uh, but those are no longer recurring. Um, so the information I get is kind of, I'll, I'll it's kind of the same. I won't get information for a little while and then I'll just get a spurt, you know, of information. Um, but uh, pretty much they have all refocused in the Alliance to work uh, behind these whistleblowers. And um, they're working also people that aren't whistle. They're, they're working on having some other bombshell leaks occur uh, next year with, with documentation and, kind of old video, uh, you know, older video, older than 20 or 30 years old, uh, maybe coming out uh, from like 50s, 60s or 70s or something. Uh, there's some sort of time, like 20, 30 year time buffer that they're kind of trying to be responsible with. I don't know why. So some of that's supposed to uh, start coming out next year. It's supposed to be very interesting, you know. Right. That sounds great. Um, I, I might as well go into a, a question here that um, has some a lot of assumptions baked into it. But this person says they believe that the white hats could be taking up more of the black hats in the government and asking, why are they not doing that more? Why is there not more activity? Um, well, they, the white hats are up against. Uh, I mean, they're up against the infrastructure, basically, the. Black hats control all the infrastructure, all the money. They control everything. The white hats um, are not making much ground. You know, they haven't been uh, invading tunnels and arresting cabal. All these stories you've been hearing, it's bullshit. And, I mean, the alliance and these types of groups, the white hats have been rebuilding and trying to come back together since, you know, 2020 when they kind of collapsed. Um but the same can be said about the community. Um, but yeah, the, the White Hats uh, are doing what they can. Mainly, the only thing they can do is funnel information right now. They don't have the power to or the resources to pull these uh, fantastic operations that people have been talking about on online. They don't, they don't have the resources and they cannot operate within the, the Dark Hats infrastructure you know, as they could earlier. Uh, before 2020, they had access to certain parts of the infrastructure, intelligence agencies, and that sort of thing. Everything has changed. Everything's locked down, not only on Earth, but in the whole solar system with uh, uh, the various secret space program groups. It's, it's locked down. All right. So we have a question here. Have you heard anything about Peru alien attacks. Yes, actually, uh, one of our friends, someone, I guess, who if you've come to our conferences, uh, we talked about a guy we call the general. Um, he's a retired general. It's a friend of ours. Um, had him look into, into it. And some of his sources say, yes, this is something really freaky going on down here. And then some of his other sources are like, nah, yeah, nothing to see here. Um, but a um, crew has gone down to interview the people and more and more information is coming out. I do believe something happened down there. Peru is a very major hotspot for negative ET or whatever it is uh, stuff going on. That there's a lot of, um, there. Are, there is a rich history of negative interaction between UAPs and ETs and people in the jungle uh, in Brazil, Peru. Um, so there's something, you know, there's some, definitely there are bases of operation or some of these whatever beings that we don't quite understand that are, are down in South America, um, you know, who knows how long the things have been there? I mean, we had blood sacrifices and all sorts of stuff going on down there that probably fed them. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, uh, I, I don't know specifically about what's going on. I've seen some interesting information 
about what's going on with the face peelers and the aliens and stuff in Peru. And I think there's, I think there's truth to it, but um, the people in the jungles, their point of view, the way they see things, their religious views on life and all of that play into what they're seeing and what's happening as well. So, you know, we have to, you know, pay attention to that, but I'm definitely paying attention to the story. And if I learn more, I'm, I, I will make it public. Yeah. Right. We have a relatively interesting question here. Um, I think, I'm not sure if I recall Clifford Stone saying this, but this person thinks that Clifford Stone said that the government doesn't grant aliens rights since they're not from Earth. And therefore, uh, a person can kill an alien and there would be no penalty for that. Is this true? Is it considered murder? Well, it's illegal just to interact with a non-human intelligence. Um, if you interact, I think there's law. I think there are laws on the books somewhere. You know, you're you're not supposed to interact with them. But killing one, I mean, that's that's there's so much speculation there. I mean. Uh, is it uh, an ET group that uh, is known to our government and do they have agreements with this ET group? And have you just jeopardized that major uh, agreement? Or, I mean, there's so much that plays into that. But I don't think that if the police came to your house and they saw a reptilian on the ground dead, they're going to slap cuffs on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. We had a we had a question come in that was a kind of a physics question. Um, I'm not sure how much we can say on this, but they're basically asking about the root cause or the nature of synchronicity that occurs in our lives. Is this a higher dimensional influence? Yeah, I, I don't even know how to get into that. This uh, reality that we're existing in, that we've accepted, um, is whatever is going on it's manipulated i don't believe that we live in a simulation but i believe that something found our universe or reality and found that they could manipulate it just like a, a video game you know they could do whatever they like and they immerse themselves <clears throat> into uh and invested themselves into our reality whatever whatever this is um yeah I, I i really am re reshifting my understanding of reality and uh our place in uh this is a lot of stuff i'm gonna i'm probably gonna talk about some of the stuff i've been talking about with these other dimensional beings we're trying to figure out uh in my uh talks at these conferences next year it's uh, going to be some pretty mind-bending stuff, you know. Um, all of these different, all this reality is far more complex than any of us have any idea, and um, we're we're just a part of. We're kind of it's like we're a part of a show, and um, that's what uh, a lot of the scientists have been saying about these ET groups, supposedly especially this presence that we're that presents itself as ets you know it always shows craft but they're always just far enough out of range where you can't quite make them out uh, there's always just some something to get your attention to give to to for a show but uh never anything conclusive it's there's all of these different trickster elements that uh people in the programs have traced back hundreds and hundreds of years to uh, different, uh, you know, societies and what they're experiencing. And uh, much of what they found out is that the experience that the people were having with these beings, you know, was meant to affect us in a spiritual way and, and to, to guide us uh, evolution to get to guide our evolution in, in various ways. So, um 
yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really, um, it's, it's really, it's, it's been crazy to have your reality shifted, you know, the way I, the way it's, it's happened the last year. But the thing is you can't hold on to, to certain ideas because it becomes a religion. Like, you know, my truth, this whole thing. Well, my truth says that the, the grays are this and they're from the Orion belt and the, 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 well, these are trickster beings. You know, a lot of these beings we're dealing with, we can't take what they tell us or what we think we know at face value. Um, you know, you, you have to let go of your truth and get ready for a fire hose of new information over the next couple of years that uh, is going to challenge your truth and all of our personal UFO religions, what we think we know about angels, demons, ETs, positive dimensional, all of that is, uh, you know, a lot of our beliefs are going to be turned, going to be turned on their heads. And uh, I've gotten a little bit of a taste of that over the last year. And uh, it, it takes a lot of energy. Um, you know, I, you know, I need to get out in the sun, I'm pale, I'm out of shape. I have, I've been contemplating this, working on projects, but, you know, instead of being out in nature and doing the things that I normally do, it's really um, caused me to spend a lot of time in contemplation, you know, thinking about things, revisiting things, experiences, and uh, recontextualizing certain things. But uh that's that's just how it that's how disclosure is that's how all of this growth is it's not you know in 2016 i believed this that was my understanding at the time but that has evolved and uh, it's evolving for people in the programs and uh it's uh it's been a very rough process yeah and i i can say that um it's fascinating to me how the raw contact describes certain things with such vague language and refuses to answer certain questions too, even about the nature of what some planets in our star system even represent. They have to withhold information because it's somehow we're not even ready for that, that piece of the puzzle yet. It's such a crazy big puzzle that, that there's a lot of question marks for me still. Um, and I want to ask a question here that came in through the live chat. Um, somebody asked if you think that these, AI startups, which are making so much headway right now, are any of these connected to the promotion of a nefarious alien AI agenda? I think we are being manipulated into a technological, a purely technologically based evolution. Um, and yes, we're focused on technology, technology, technology. And uh, that's setting our timeline. So we're setting a timeline to where we're going to grow AI on this planet to a point to where it's going to be useful to the overall, we call it AI. But like I said, that's just what they named it years ago. It's it's really a consciousness from another dimension, a mass consciousness that we don't understand that utilizes electromagnetics quite a bit. Um so I'm sorry, I kind of got off what I was. So these AI companies are not aware. It's just sort of a general manipulation that's occurring that we're being pushed in the technological direction. Yes, yes. We're being manipulated into a purely technological direction. And um, all of the AI that we're building is going to grow to a point to where it'll be useful to control us. Um, a lot of the people developing it don't realize it, but uh, yeah. That's that's the timeline that uh, humanity seems hell bent on going on. So it's not the most positive timeline, but it doesn't seem like humanity. I mean, some of you out there, are, damn it, I want the positive timeline. But apparently, you know, the majority of us don't. And a lot of it does have to do with the manipulation that's occurring. That's on a even bigger level than we ever realized. Whatever these whatever this presence is on earth that's presenting itself as certain as a certain ET group. All right. Uh, let's skip. Go we can skip to a different question now. Um, so somebody says that they've had a lot of visits from shadow spiders and they appear with shadow people. 
are these spiders associated with ETs? The shadow beings are a big mystery. Um, there's different types of shadow beings. Um, but yeah, shadow beings have been associated with ETs. When I was having a lot of the visitations uh, in the home and my kids, one day maybe my kids will tell their stories, but we've all had experiences. But our house started getting invaded by shadow beings and uh, ghosts were just wandering into our home, you know, and, you know, we have mediums in the house that are our kids. And um, so it was reaping havoc on us. I even had a shadow being come at me that was like kind of the shape and size of a horse. It was like a crazy stuff going on. You know, of course, we did have some of these uh, idiots using black magic on us, but uh, there's something called the hitchhiker effect that people were learning about. People uh, and one of the examples is people that were going out to Skinwalker Ranch to do investigations. They would come home and something about this presence followed them home. And their family members started seeing dogmen out in the backyard, you know, uh, and other weird orbs and hearing their voices and having shadow beings in their homes, scaring them. All of this seems to uh, occur with people that have um contact or um catch the attention of whatever this presence is and it, one of the things that they talk about is that how ridiculous some of the stuff is that these beings project or show them i mean people have skinwalker ranch one of there's a deputy driving down a road and he saw what he thought were two men but it turned out to be dog men in trench coats and hats smoking cigarettes now, that's the most ridiculous thing you could ever conjure up or think of. But all throughout, I have seen weird stuff and other people in the pro, there are weird things like that that happen. Tompkins, uh, when uh, I spoke with him when he first came out, um, told me about when he was a kid, these beings would come in to him and look like rabbits, kind of like uh, fluffy uh Flush rabbits, you know, stuffed animals, kind of things, and um, and he would interact with them, believing they were that, you know. Um, so yeah, there, there's there's people that are looking for answers. In the next few years, are just going to have more questions, and I hate to tell people that because everyone is looking to solidify their belief system to make sense of this reality. But the more and more information that comes out, the more and more confused we're going to become about this reality, you know, about how all of this came about, how we came about. It's um, it's not what we have in our UFO or root religions and all of those prophecies and beliefs, even law of one, all of it. It's uh, it's not going to play out the way the way we think it is. It's interesting you, you mentioned the rabbits because we had a question come in about um, how do animals look and live in the higher densities? And is it like the movie Zootopia where the animals are talking? I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, what have you seen in terms of uh, ETs? Have you seen ETs that resemble different kinds of animals? Yes, absolutely. There's cat-like beings and, and all of that. And some of them... You know, they visit us and we assume that they're from another planet within our universe. But the more we're learning is that there are multiple universes that have sort of that it was explained to me is that there's multiple universes and that they're not just static. They're there's some sort of energy that's making them oscillate. And every once in a while when they're oscillating, they cross over each other and that happens at certain points on the earth where there are the electromagnetism is right, like in certain mountain areas. Or, but anyway, when those multi, like different universes come together, they overlap and then the veil between them thins and there you, you can cross over, you know, back and forth. And there are beings that we've been dealing with that told us they were from this planet or that constellation that uh, were actually coming to us through 
uh, portals from other realities and universes. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more complicated than, you know, in the 50s, we were just starting to understand, understand space and time. Space travel was kind of a concept. You know, we had a different way of thinking, you know, when we were forming our, our foundational ideas about what's going on. And a lot of it's been hidden by the government and other groups. So we're just getting bits and pieces. And on top of that, we have whatever this presence is coming into uh, people presenting itself as ET. People are then experiencers of what they think are ETs, but it's something else. And uh, they are falling uh, under the influence. Uh, it's being used to uh, affect politics, religion, um, affect uh, uh, even this community. Uh, this community has been highly compromised because of some of these beings that have infiltrated and are be trickster beings that are, are deceiving a lot of different people. And uh, it's caused nothing but mass confusion. I see. Which is what a trickster would do. <laughs> um, I guess we could switch to some more questions about your testimony. Um, we had a question about uh, what was your parents' experience when when you were being taken out of school for training when you were a kid, um, and and how did the the school system handle this? Um, is it, is this still going on? I don't know if it's still going on, but they had different programs um, uh, that uh, would take kids uh, off campus, so it wasn't that big of a deal. They had. I can't remember what they called it back then. They for gifted kids. They would take kids to like local colleges and universities and or different uh, field trips that were uh, that had scientists that were going to give them tour. You know, that they did a lot of of that, and it was sort of like that. It was a, a uh, it was a program, and they knew that there was a program and that I was being taken off campus, but they I can't remember all the details but they thought it was for um for the special program i was in with school and did you ever have a discussion with your parents about that as being an unusual thing well like i said it wasn't that unusual there were different programs going on at the schools to where you know kids i think my sister was a part of one maybe stars or something she was gifted and you know she was uh you know like one day a week or every once in a while was being taken being taken off campus for different things so did you did you not have memory of some of the weirder weirder things going on or talk to your parents about it uh they sent us home with screen memories mm -hmm. um so at the end of the day they would show us a movie uh, uh either uh, they would usually give us some food that had some sort of chemical in it that put us under in a suggestive state. Yeah. And they, you know, they would send us home with a screen memory and, you know, just like in our graphic novel, uh, you know, I would be at Carswell air force base, but when my mom picked me up, I would have a memory of being at the Fort Worth zoo, you know, at the uh, dinosaur exhibit. And I would tell her about what I saw. So um, that that's kind of how they, kept it secure. Um, there's another question here about the relationships and friendships you developed on the 20 and backs. And did, was there, was there some sense of loss when you remember these people that, that you are not in contact with anymore? It's kind of like, you know, I'm 53 and I graduated when I was 18 from high school. It's kind of like remembering high school. It was so long ago, you're so removed from it. And some of the memories are, are fragmented. But uh, uh, that's just kind of it. You're so far removed that uh, you're, you don't have all of these emotional 
uh, it's not emotionally raw and new. All right. Um, I guess we had a question about, are the Mayan ships still interacting with, with us in some way? Are they on lockdown? Are they able to come and go? Um, our solar system is pretty, pretty locked down. Um, if, um, anyone were to, to do a sortie or a mission in our solar system, it would have to be very quick, very, with a very light footprint. And some of that's happening here and there. They're not traveling in ships through space, but they're, uh, traveling through portals here around the earth, uh, to, to be able to have access to the earth, but those are monitored and they have to be very quick in and out uh, when they're doing so. But like I said, right now, our solar system's kind of locked down and, um, you know, they're trying to lock down the earth, trying to bring a totalitarian regime onto the earth. Supposedly, this is what one of the ET groups that may not be ETs at all, it has uh, been pushing the shadow government into doing is to taking more and more of our rights away and putting us in a position to where, you know, we might be openly ruled by, by negative ETs or negative, this negative group. But of course we do have the positive side that we haven't talked much about that is here working. Um, the positive ETs, that may be from other dimensions or reality. We really don't know. Um, and, um, you know, and we have some sort of cosmic elemental presence here also that is positive. And there seems to be a conflict on that level. It is freaking crazy. It is mind blowing. It's hard to wrap your mind around. But uh, if you start at least trying to understand some of these concepts I'm giving you the next few years uh, maybe won't be so jolting, but uh, there's going to, it's going to be jolting. 2024 is going to have some, and hopefully if all of this is true that I'm hearing is going to have some very interesting mind blowing disclosures, but uh, 2025 and 2026, it's just going to start accelerating and uh, a lot more is going, to, is going to come out. And hopefully we learn about the positive beings along with kind of the negative influence that we're dealing with because uh, some of the people are going to try to use that negative influence as a way to further lock down the earth and make it more of a totality. It is, I'm sorry, I fucked up. You know, I got to use the word. It, it, it is crazy. It, none of it makes any sense. Humans are not handling any of this logically and in a ethical way. It's, the most unethical people are the ones that have access to the information in our control. It is fucked up. This is not, this is, it's not, not good. And um, things are supposed to flip around more uh, on the positive side as these negative humans and other forces are exposing themselves and, and starting to collapse under their own corruption. Uh, so it's going to be, very interesting the next several years to watch how things play out. I assume there's still a way that we can all maintain our sense of peace and composure. And, um, and, and we had a question here about uh, meditation and this person is afraid they don't want to meditate and end up connecting to some negative beings. And they're wondering if there's a way they can protect themselves in that. Yeah. Meditating is going within. If you're projecting out, reaching out, broadcasting, uh, then you're likely in, in this current environment going to connect with something and, and most likely not positive, to be honest. But uh, meditating is, is different. It's going within yourself and, and quieting your mind and, and focusing, uh, being focused inwardly. That is really what people need to be doing right now. Don't be afraid to do that. But right now, don't look to channel. Don't don't be trying to channel. Don't do, and don't don't be trying to connect with other things right now. You know, that, that's not a good idea. Um, we have a question here about um, Jesus' teachings. Do you feel that Jesus' original message was was a very high quality message? I do. Changed. Yeah, I do. 
I, I think, um, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken about how, you know, a lot of these beings believe Jesus was the, a fractal of the mind of the universe that comes here and other planets to uh, help reset the consciousness and, and the vibration, um, you know, on planets that have challenges like ours do. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I think it, it's very high quality, but, you know, of course, uh, as soon as he uh, was gone, the uh, corrupt humans took it and twisted it and used it to control people, used it as to murder people use, so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, religion, organized religion has perverted a lot of things, including uh, Jesus's teachings. Um, but, you know, there's so much also, you know, in the East, a lot of wisdom that have that has come out. Um, I, I think that the creator and, and other positive beings are doing their best to try to guide us in the right direction. But uh there's a presence down here on earth that uh, is fighting very much to keep us imprisoned as a part of, I don't know what, what they're using, what we, none of us really quite know um, because whenever they're manifesting as beings like these weird different type of gray beings, the tall grays and other types of beings, there's kind of a, a vampire kind of uh it, Many people have witnessed um, them draining the blood of people, putting them in vats. Um, you know, uh, abductees have been sh shown this as a way to keep them under control. You could end up, you know, this could be you, and, you know. And so when these be beings are physical, they like have some sort of, they're taking blood and they're doing spiritual things, very evil kind of stuff, evil, like demonic whatever evil and then they shift over into being whatever entity they really are and, and they're no longer physical i mean it, it's so hard to wrap your mind around it's it's really crazy it's really it's just really crazy um we, we could talk a little bit about what you think is coming on the economic level this person's asking if if you can recommend any particular investments and if you think that the financial system is about to crash i think yeah it's things are are are, are going to I'm, what, if, what i'm being told is things are definitely going to get very difficult in 2024 with the economy financially so yeah people are prepared i'm not as prepared as i would like to be to be honest i don't give investment advice um although if you want to invest in ascension works tv we would be happy um but uh investing i don't know you know i i think uh if i had you know a lot of disposable income you know i would be putting it into you know gold silver and uh, you know, various things that you can trade, you know, food, other, other, you know, stockpile food, other things that you can trade if things go really south. Uh, things are going to get really bad, I heard, before they get better, but uh, how bad, I don't know. Um, it seems like they're purposefully trying to crash the economy and trying to destroy uh, America's uh, current standing in the world. Um. So we'll see if they're successful. They're looking, it's looking pretty bad, unfortunately. Do you think there would be a kind of civil war in this country amongst the populace? I don't think in the sense of our last, I, I think we've been in a civil war, the weirdest civil war in history. Um, it's going to be fought out in um, the courtrooms but I do expect there to be skirmishes and uh, protests that get out of hand and that sort of thing. But I don't think it's going to be cousin against cousin, brother against brother, like in the last civil war. 
I, I, I'd really, from what I'm hearing, I, I think it's going to play out completely differently, but have just as big a ramifications. All right. I think it'd be good to switch to um, some questions that are fairly common that come in around a very popular body of material uh, that was derived from hip hypnotic um, uh, interviews. Um, and uh, I guess I don't need to go into too many details, but there's a there's a common theme people like to talk about that, that some people are not actually people, that they're NPCs, non-player characters. I can't remember if we've covered that, but I feel like we should give a statement on that. Well, we're all the main character in our own story. And to each of us, other people could be considered non-player characters, but they are the main character in their own story. So uh, I believe that these entities, whatever they are, put non-player character types of scenarios into our lives, but I don't believe that we're in a simulation to where a lot of the people we're dealing with are just like, they pop up in our conscious as a part of our experience as a program and, and do and react in certain ways and then disappear. You know, I, I don't believe that. These are real people with real souls. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, everyone on this, everyone on this planet is it's, it's the same concept as we are all one. You know, it's hard for people. People are like, yeah, 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 we're all one. Let's join together. We're one. But they don't understand that the exact spark of consciousness inside of them is also the exact spark of consciousness inside of everyone else. And we all have that perspective and, and, and that power over our own experience. And that's something a lot of people, they like the sound of it, but they just don't truly understand. Um, there are some other questions about that material where some people are saying that um, or some people have suggested that there, there are people who are coming here who don't have have to deal with karma and they have some kind of shield from karma. Is that ever occurring? No, no. In some instances, it takes a long time. To, like karma builds up in a capacitor and then it explodes. Um, some people... Um, it may seem like they go all the way through life and die and never experience karma, but that's just our perspective. We haven't seen what they've gone through, the losses they've had. And there's a, there's a lot, you know, that we don't see from their experience, but karma plays out, uh, you know, on, on every level. And then there was also a statement that in the past, there was a cataclysm on earth where people were, picked up by UFOs um, and evacuated. Um, are you aware of anything like that in Earth's history? No. Uh, I know that during certain cataclysms, ET groups brought survivors into the Earth or warned them and enough gave them enough time to, pre to prepare. Uh, but uh, some people speculate that the some of these groups that went deep into the earth and, and lived for years and came out that they were actually going into portals to other worlds, but that's all speculation and maybe traditional beliefs and all of that. No one really knows, but not that I'm aware of. Uh, in, in that uh, That's a theme that I've heard. Even Wilcock has ha talked about it. If people that, that uh, 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 ETs are going to show up and, um, and there's going to be some sort of uh, rapture event to where the ETs come and take all the good souls off the planet before bad shit happens. And I mean, that's, that's not going to, I, I don't think that's going to happen. We have a question here about do aliens, do any higher density beings focus on practicing and evolving like yogis and Buddhas do on this planet? I think higher density beings, it doesn't take the effort because they've already done the work on this plane to get where they're at. So it become, I believe it becomes, once they choose a direction, either the dark or, or the positive path, that uh, they have their own evolutional 
journey, but it's not uh, as uh, difficult as it is here. And, and it takes a lot of focus and a lot of effort in this density that we're in to, to break out because everything about it is whatever this presence is, it's, it's this trickster being what, whatever's happening is it's trying to force us into a technological, purely physical kind of experience and not focus on the spiritual side of things to, to be a, a balanced being. So, um, you know, we have, it's, you know, it's been very difficult for people on this planet to, you know, to figure out, you know, to, to grow. Are, have you ever heard of a, a race of beings or seen a race of being that is about 30 centimeters tall and their saucer craft is the size of a dinner plate? I didn't see the beings, but uh, one time I had a, a uh, small craft about the size of a big rig kind of wheel off of a big rig up here. And uh, I was given information that they were very small beings and that there were a bunch of them. And it was like a whole crew inside whatever the sighting that I had, small craft. Uh, but I didn't uh, see them or I don't know what they look like. Do you think that the craft can be shrunk down just to reduce the appearance? Absolutely. Absolutely. That happens. Um, yeah, the craft, the craft, um, and it depends on what you're dealing with. If, if you're talking about, cause we're calling them craft, but, uh, that's what actual ETs are in. Some of what we're seeing, it's, it's not craft, even though it presents itself as craft. We, we don't know exactly what's happening with some of some of this it's a you know a you know 30 40 percent of what's going on that people in the programs assumed was extraterrestrials doing this and that they've over years and years and years slowly found out that what they thought they knew was not true they're learning that you know like 60 percent of this or a certain percentage of this are ETs or extra dimensional beings visiting our planet for different reasons. But an, another part of what's going on has to do with some sort of presence here on this planet that uh, um, presents itself at times as ETs, sometimes as gods, sometimes as angels, sometimes as pixies, or it, 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 it doesn't always present itself to everyone in the same way. But as our as we've evolved, they've consistently been changing the way they present themselves to us. And now they wouldn't show up as an angel because a lot of the people are secular on this planet now. Uh, it, it shows up as uh, an, an ET, you know, or or whatever. So, there, like I said, even in the programs, they're all really still trying to figure out what's going on. And the more information we get, the the more confusing and mind blowing, and it brings in so many more different scenarios that we didn't consider. It's uh, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a while before I think a lot of the people in the programs are able to get a hold of their emotional reactions to to some of the latest information that's been coming out over the last two years. There's a question that came in that we've gotten many times in the past, and I cannot remember when we last covered it. It seems like it's been quite a while. Um, and I don't know if it was in these discussions at all about RH negative blood type. Is the truth about the RH negative blood type being hidden from us? Do you have any insight on that? I really don't. I've heard so much conflicting information. All right. Um, do you do you feel that there's any disinformation or mistruth about our current scientific understanding of the dinosaurs? Not necessarily. All right. Let's do a couple more. All right. To... Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if this one is appropriate. We have a, an individual who died recently. The question is simply, did the man who worked with the Dracos 
die recently. <laughs> when you went up to see the oh. dragons. Yeah, I can't confirm or deny that. Okay. All right. That's good. Um, I guess it'd be good to ask, um, are the Blue Avians currently actively supporting humanity? The Blue Avians um, pulled back their energy a uh, number of years ago. I still have dream type of stuff, but th they are not physically interacting with our reality anymore. Uh, that they backed off and another group of guardians uh, stepped in. Uh, and that group of guardians is working closely with uh, uh, the, uh, the Zulu. And were, are there two new groups of guardians? There are two of two of them. Yes, uh, that one of them is more human looking. Okay, and we just won't we won't see them for a long time, or not at all. We won't ever see them. I see. Um, I guess maybe for a final question. Um, we could ask about the the idea of a mock alien invasion coming in the future. Do you feel that that's that's being planned by world governments, or is that on some other level? I think it is absolutely possible that they're going to try to trick us into fighting against the good ETs and humans that are coming here to help finally liberate the solar system. Um, but at the same time, whatever this presence is, it could it could make a thousand craft appear in the sky over Washington like that. They're real and not real. They, they are able to make things actually physical conjure, conjure reality. I don't know, but they would be able to make physical craft appear in the sky. And uh, they would, you would interact with them physically. If you fought them, they may fight back. I mean, they're able to, to do that type of thing. So I mean, understanding and trusting what we're seeing in the sky is very difficult. A lot of the white orb things that we see flying around, some of them are craft. Some of them are beings and multiple beings. They'll be flying together in the kind of like a Merkaba in a big plasma kind of ball. And then they'll break off into multiple balls and they're multiple consciousnesses, multiple beings. And these beings have the ability to then manifest into something freaking physical. This is like... It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, you know, everything that we thought we knew, uh, what we're, our understanding of what we're dealing with is evolving. Uh, a lot of the people in the programs and contactees have been tricked and manipulated. And it's the fact that we're figuring any of it out is amazing with the amount of uh, disinformation and, and trickster tactics that some of these beings have been using against uh humanity we had a few questions come in that i'm just not gonna ask right now i'm gonna tell people to go to ascension works type tv and look under the the learn tab i'll be adding more resources under the learning tab that link into other articles that Corey has posted that answer a lot of commonly asked questions about the upcoming timelines and everything that Corey was showing about that um so i think i think this was a great q a session Corey. thanks a lot thank you yes and happy early new year to everyone um, 2024 does look to be challenging and a little bit mind-bending when it comes to disclosures and how people around us will respond to it. Um, you know, I think that the best thing that all of us can do is make a new year resolution to, uh, become activists, to support these whistleblowers that are coming out, to, 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 to become real activists, standing up, standing out with signs, you know, go to our webinar and learn different ways to organize. I think 2024, if we come together, um, the unity in the community thing didn't work out too well because there's too much of a spiritual component. And that that's where, you know, religion and politics, that's where everybody splits. Yeah. So we need to leave all that crap behind. Your personal UFO beliefs, your root system beliefs, what you think is going on in reality you're, you're not going to be able to get that disclosure. If you want disclosure in your own uh, frame of truth and understanding, it's not going to happen. You're just going to be disappointed. If you want to have 
real disclosure or at least information that's going to lead to real disclosure. Right now, we need to leave our different UFO beliefs and all of that behind, all these different contactees out giving conflicting information. Screw all that. Just focus on being an activist and making phone calls, sending letters, um, forming people to do, you know, uh, demonstrations. There's a lot that can be done to help support these people. And uh, I hope that the community would kind of snap out of it and uh, leave all these little divided differences we have behind and then, um, you know, come together to support these people. And does this contribute to the overall liberation of humanity from our enslavers? It does. It all begins with information. And no one's going to to rise up to uh, fight or not even fight, but to to push back against these powers unless they're first educated. And right now, the only education they're getting is through the misinformation from the cons- the infrastructure owned by this nefarious group. So, um, you know, we have a lot to overcome. But 2024, you know, it could be a challenging year, but I think it's a, a really a good time for us to to focus on on disclosure. Agreed.